Welcome, everyone. Good afternoon, and welcome to the 111th Material Culture Forum. How proud we are that all of us dedicated volunteers at Smithsonian have lasted 30 years. Thank you, Cynthia Hoover and the audience and others who were with Cynthia from the beginning of this. Uh, we. Uh, pride ourselves on uh, doing quarterly sessions uh, and being open to all Smithsonian uh, and really building the scholarly community uh, across the institution. Um, how we come together, discuss our material culture, integrate the arts, the history and culture and science. I think today's session on the art and science of celestial navigation across the Smithsonian universe is certainly a testament to how we are coming together across disciplines to think about our collections. And I wanna thank all of the members of our steering committee, and especially my co-chairs, Julia Blakely and Jennifer Zazo-Brown, uh, and uh, the organizers of uh, today's session, uh, Julia, uh, our driving force, uh, as well as, uh, Cara Fama and Vilma Ortiz Sanchez here uh, from the National Museum of American Indian. Uh, it is going to be a wonderful afternoon and just a few housekeeping uh, details. We are gonna have uh, question and answers in a moderated session afterwards. Uh, there's a microphone at the center of the auditorium. Uh, so please, if you do have a question, uh, go up to the uh, microphone. Uh, and afterwards, uh, we will have a reception. Uh, it's $20 per person and uh, we hope that all of you uh, will be able to stay and attend that as well. Uh, and coming up uh, later this spring on March, uh, excuse me, May 13th, uh, we will have a D-Day 75th anniversary material culture uh, forum uh, that I am co-organizing with Todd Kinzer uh, from Smithsonian Exhibits. So settle in uh, and welcome uh, to the National Museum of American Indian. I have the pleasure of introducing uh, our colleague David Penny, who is the Associate Director for Scholarships and Research here uh, at the building. So welcome, David. Good afternoon. Uh, my job is to welcome you here to uh, the National Museum of the American Indian, uh, in particular um, our recently renovated uh, Rasmussen Theater. Uh, this uh, theater has been a really workhorse for us and for the Smithsonian, and the Rasmussen Foundation generously uh, agreed to help pay for some improvements and renovations, and so uh, we're very glad to, to have you here and, and host uh, uh, this event here in, in, our, in our theater. I bring greetings from our director, uh, Kevin Gover, who unfortunately could not be here to, uh, to join us. He's traveling around the country as I speak. He's raising money for our National Native Veterans Memorial. Uh, one of the big initiatives here at the National Museum of the American Indian will be breaking ground for the uh, memorial in 2019 and uh, planning the dedication on Memorial Day of 2020. Um, another big monument uh, memorial here in Washington, D.C. Now, there is a great topic for and topical uh, subject for material culture studies, uh, how we remember the past in these big um, um, uh, public memorials and monuments. Um, while you're here, well, I guess it won't be while you're here since we'll be closing, but on the occasion of um, being here, I'd just like to remind you of the the stellar exhibitions that we have here, maybe for a return visit, if you haven't seen them already. Up on the fourth floor are um, Nation to Nation, uh, Treaties Between the United States and American Indian Nations. This exhibition won the uh, Exhibition of the Year from the American Association of Museums in 2014, so very well received, important exhibition. Um, also on that same floor, um, you can go, go, still go into our, our universes uh, galleries. This is the last inaugural uh, exhibition here at NMAI, uh, one of the exhibition spaces that opened the building. And I recall it was a very groundbreaking kind of initiative with community curated installations. Um, and we're very proud. We've done some additional work in that to kind of update some of the media and other things in there so we can live with that uh, marvelous exhibition for a few more years. 
Uh, more recently, on the third floor, we opened uh, the exhibition Americans. Um, this is a really groundbreaking exhibition for us, something very different. I don't know if I really want to describe it. You have to sort of experience for yourself, but it really is about uh, American Indians and American popular imagination um, and uh, popular history um, and how uh, we find in the United States American Indians everywhere um, and billboards, signs, uh, commercial advertisements, red face and sports games and so on. Uh, but uh, American Indians themselves and uh, American Indian history is largely invisible uh, to uh, most American people. And then uh, just a reminder, we have also opened uh, our Inca Road exhibition, which was the last major project and um, really a, a terrific accomplishment of our esteemed uh, recently retired colleague, Ramiro Matos, the great Quechua archeologist and sort of giant approving in archeology. span um, we're, we're touring um, uh, panel uh, versions of that exhibition throughout South America as I speak. So lots here to see, lots here to do. I hope you'll come back, but thank you for being here right now. Um, now I'd like to uh, introduce the moderator uh, for our afternoon, um, uh, David Dvorkin, uh, who is the Senior Curator of History and Astronomy and the Space Sciences at the National Air and Space Museum. David. As is traditional for, a mutual, uh, for, for the uh, uh, Material Culture Forum, there's always somebody who comes in the spirit of the theme. And so I've taken on that spirit, uh, recognizing uh, our, our Navy, of course, as a prime example of the uh, most important uh, trio of, uh, of uh, characteristics and powers that you must have. In, in not only the modern world, but for all time. And that is communication, command, and control. And lying at the base of all of that is location, location, location. And it's all about navigation. I don't know if, uh, maybe I should stand over here so you can hear me a little better. Uh, but uh, yes, I will be your moderator. And when I was asked to moderate, and I was delighted to do that, uh, my first question was why, why me? And it's true that I am uh, uh, curator of the um, astronomy collection at the National Air and Space Museum. And indeed, uh, in the history of astronomy, uh, it's deeply uh, committed to uh, the uh, art of navigation. Uh, it's also, you might even consider it a science. Uh, but then I remembered that I wrote a book about it. And of course, I want to blatantly advertise it here. It was published by the Smithsonian Press in 1986 and it's called Practical Astronomy. And it was six lectures on time, place, and space. And it was all about celestial navigation. Not that I forgot about it, but I just realized that my God, somebody is still reading this. It's usually used as a textbook. But I want to present this to the Naval Academy. I don't think they have a copy in their library, and I think they should have one. But on that, let me now say we are going to have seven speakers who represent the wealth of the collections, not only in the Smithsonian, but uh, at, at the uh, Naval Academy, uh, to come up and give a, seven flash talks. And uh, some of you probably are familiar with that. Uh, don't blink, okay? That's my one recommendation, don't blink. Uh, they will be introduced in your program, uh, and they will introduce themselves if they wish, in sequence, and then after that, we will have a Q&A uh, that I will do my best to moderate, which is my purpose for being here. So again, uh, let me thank you, and let us start out with our first speaker. Uh, and I believe that is, should be Bill? Or do I have that wrong? Oh, no, okay. Thank you, sorry. Oh. <laughs> 